Uh, but he comes to us on Fridays. I'm really happy that we have a chance to talk to someone who he knows the music scene, San Francisco scene. He's uh, he's there at the Royal Grounds on Polk Street, banging out his columns for the Marina Times, marinatimes.com. He knows movies. He knows all manner of performance, and he comes to us on a rainbow. Oh, he does indeed. Michael Snyder, the culture blaster, everyone. Nice. Hey there, Michael. Uh, hey, greetings. Uh, Mark, Brett, John. It's like the old Kingston trio, Nick, Bob, and John. But it's, boy, that is a. Wow, that's a reference I don't even get, but I, I, but I respect it nonetheless. They had a big hit. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. What? They, they had a big hit back in the day called Tom Dooley Super Bowl. What Super Bowl? It's mm. Valentine's Day weekend, baby. Is that a thing, by the way? I think Valentine's Day is Monday, but it's it's Valentine's Day weekend. Yeah, Love, you got to prep. You got to prep for. Love it. is in the air. Like Brett's procedure Monday, you got to prep for. <laughs> uh, you know, Mark. Everybody always talks about the hearts and the flowers, but what about the bleeding and the thorns? That's what I'm asking mm, you, pal. Yeah, there's a downside, isn't there? Better to have loved and lost, right? Though, yeah, Michael, yeah. yeah. Than I never actually to wrote have. a very timely column about that very thing, and you can read it online in the current Marina Times at Marina Times. Uh, uh, thank you. Respect the mention of the Marina Times. Excellent. Okay, anyway, I know you're all excited about the Winter Olympics. Uh, yeah, and uh, not me. I'm not interested in the Winter Olympics. How dare you? Uh, I, I guess I'm just snowboard. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> you cannot say you love your country. I want to take away the applause that we gave him before for oh, the other man. mention. Hey, um, by the way, speaking of Valentine's Day, this is kind of sad, bittersweet. It is the last uh, booty uh, San Francisco at the DNA Lounge this Saturday. Their lovers ball. They have come to a parting of the ways with the DNA Lounge. I think booty is going to relocate in a month or so to um, the rickshaw stop, and I think that's going to be great. They've they've done the event. Well, the there DNA before. has been their been their place for a while. It's though. been the flagship baby, yeah. but um, for reasons. Uh, apparently, it's an amicable split, but that's what they said when you know every star divorces. You know, uh, anyway. <laughs> By the way, but by the way, booty is great. Michael took me to a bunch of them, and it really is awesome. So if you can get to the DNA Lounge for their big finish, uh, at least at DNA, do it. Uh, it. It's really worth it. It's a lot of fun. Mash up madness, everybody. It's just good, good fun. We had our uh, tr- where, I, where I interacted with the transvestite. Remember the transvestite conversation oh, the, we had? Uh, those were drag queens, my friend. Call them what they are. Oh, okay. They don't. Call, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I don't. I'm sorry. I really do. I should just be quiet on that stuff. But but, um, but it was cute. It was still cute. <laughs> it was Michael showed up just in time. <laughs> Anyway, that story for another time. What do you have for us today? Uh, hey, let's talk briefly about some TV things that have just knocked my socks off. One in particular, Reacher on Amazon. John Wick better watch his back. Reacher is a pretty cool character with the body of a king-sized World Wrestling Federation Who star. Who is that guy? It's just so really... Fury. God, oh, yeah. and the occasional headbutt. And he has the observational skills and analytical brain of Sherlock Holmes. And he has the taciturn nature of Clint Eastwood's man with no name. Hell, John Cena better watch his back. Alan Richson, wow. uh, who played Hawk on the DC Comics TV shows, has himself a star-making turn as an ex-military hero and crime-busting MP named Jack Reacher. And this is based on the popular novels by Lee Child. Um, this character is blunt, no filter, fearless, walks straight at trouble, doesn't care. He's always the biggest guy in the room, which is why it was so weird that Tom Cruise played him in the movies. Oh, the hubris of the little guy. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Anyway, this is the, it's the real deal. Punch-ups, mysteries, Reacher on Amazon. Also, He's Cor- a sex-trafficking, <laughs> demon-possessed mongrel. Oh, okay, is there any? I hope uh, not. Yeah. Also, quickly, uh, The Gilded Age on HBO. You know, I want to go to the flip side of, of what we get from Reacher. This comes from Downton Abbey creator and writer Julian Fellows, no. and it's a soapy, diligently, and elegantly produced drama about the rich and snooty in New York City during the 1880s when the city was experiencing boom years thanks to the nouveau riche uh, industrialists and it created a sort of schism between new money and old money and the upper crust is at work and play there's some upstairs downstairs stuff here but it's more about the wealthy interlopers trying to weasel into the more aristocratic climes of mayflower descendants no. not so much downton abbey as uptown grabby but um <laughs> what's it not, called it's called the gilded age it's on hbo and it features uh, some pretty cool actors including uh, cynthia nixon and uh, the woman from the the um, 
the good fight. Um, she, um, she's um, a fine actress. Google it. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Anyway, uh, was it Joanne Margulies? Not Juliana Margulies, uh, not uh, the uh, the other woman. The, the other woman. Google yeah. it. Yeah. Christine yeah. Baranski. Let's, let's, Christine Baranski. Christine Baranski. Oh, Thank yeah. you. And yeah. and one of the three um, Merle Streep daughters uh, who doesn't use the name uh, of their father, like Mamie Gummer and Grace Gummer, who of course are little mini Merles. But this one, I think her name is Louise <laughs> Jacobson. But but she's fine. They, uh, wow. they close your eyes. It's like Merle's there. No. Anyway. Uh, by the way, just a moment, Chris, if you would please. Taciturn, it does get a ding. Oh, uh, hubris gets a ding. Oh no. And schism gets a ding. Please. Ouch. Okay, right, so ahead. let's go to movies. Kenneth Brano, director, follows up Belfast, which is that wonderful ensemble drama based on his uh, childhood growing up in Northern Ireland with Death on the Nile. This is his second shot at adapting one of Agatha Christie's delightful mystery novels featuring the fussy and precise Belgian detective Hercule Poirot played a second time by Kenneth Branagh, actor. Anyway, the previous Poirot movie uh, from Branagh was 2017's Murder in the Orient Express, and there's uh, at least one carryover character besides him. I liked it a little better than Death on the on the Nile, but both movies are diverting if you want to waste a couple hours with a star-studded cast, exotic locales, and turbulent, mysterious circumstances involving, you know, death and murder. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, these uh, these Christie adaptations come around every decade or two, don't they? And and this is uh, our decade's version of was it. There, what was the original Death on the Nile? I never knew who was in that. Or uh, was I that? don't know, but people died, and it was on the Nile. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, but, you know, there were, there's been a couple murder on the Orient Express. Can you let him finish? Sir? I'm sorry, yeah. I just had a question. Anyway, right, this one, ahead. like like Branner's murder on the Orient Express, is like masterpiece theater grande. You know, you get a cast led by Branner, whose Poirot is on an Egyptian vacation and invited to a wedding. Uh, of some beautiful people he knows, then trapped on a party boat, cross uh, it's cruising down the Nile, uh, and then various folks start dying, and he has to solve the mystery. The Straight cast, up right in, no problem. The <laughs> cast includes Gal Gadot, Annette Benning, wow, Army Hammer, Letitia Wright, Rose Leslie, Sto- uh, Sophie Okonedo, Russell Brand, Jennifer Saunders, and Dawn French. Suspects all, wow. uh, you know, uh, they're panoramic. Vistas. I hope Gal Gadot didn't do it. I love her. Well, you know, there there are some wacky accents here, and I don't know that that, that Poirot's especially that Belgian accent. Yikes! You could cut it with a cheese knife. But in any event, <laughs> um, there's also some World War One backstory to Poirot, which I don't think was necessary, but it's polished and flows along. Nice to see Russell Brand and the comedy team of French and Saunders on board. Uh, you know, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, Belfast is a much better movie from Kenny B, but Death on the Nile is entertaining, lushly appointed, uh, chock-a-block with uh, accomplished thespians, a little languid, and the sort of movie you might drift off to sleep while watching if you uh, start at home too late in the evening uh, once it gets to a streaming service on HBO. But for now, it's in theaters. It was Death great. I loved it. Okay. Well, okay. I, uh, very, by the way, languid is definitely a ding word. Thank Always. You. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, they've cranked out another Liam Neeson thriller, Shock of Shocks. It's no. called Blacklight. And this one has been released in the dead of winter and uh, falling victim to the law of diminishing returns. Uh, poor script. Phoned in performances from Neeson oh. as an FBI fixer tasked with saving compromised undercover agents who are in too deep and an uh, equally blab performance by Aidan Quinn as his ex-soldier pal turned FBI boss. When our hero uh, learns of the possible conspiracy jeopardizing democracy, boy, that's a stretch, huh? Uh, he goes into <laughs> action, uh, and he goes into action gingerly. I mean, the man is 69 going on 70. Look, it's not a Neeson movie if he doesn't croak out, give me back my daughter at some point. <laughs> well, if there was any question about him getting long in the tooth, this time it's give me back my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, he still has a certain set of skills. You know, oh, I, wow. I know, I know you're thinking uh, it's the ability to chug a half gallon of Metamucil. But no, in Blacklight. <laughs> I get it because he's older. I his get character okay, has yeah, OCD. Yeah. He has OCD. He's agent OCD of the FBI. <laughs> anyway, he uses it to kind of. Uh, divert uh, the, the bad guys and thwart them. Look, it's a little different, and I doubt if Blacklight's going to end up in the black. It's pretty weak sauce, but Neeson has been cranking these out. I mean, yeah, that's the, his real special set of skills is cranking out these movies. The Marksman, The Ice Road, Honest Thief, they're flawed, but considerably better than this one, and The Commuter from 2018 was pretty good as they go. This is in theaters, but I'd wait for streaming, and then I'd watch The Commuter instead. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right.
Okay. Wow. I don't think you should apologize for how you feel. Okay. All right. Marry me. Teams Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson. What an odd couple. Opposites kind of attract. Um, it's a uh, tried and tired rom-com uh, with, uh, I guess, processed American Idol era music, inclusive modern trappings, and some elements cribbed or inspired from J- J-Lo's real life. Get this. Uh, it's also forgettable piffle. It could have been much worse. I know that's not a ringing endorsement, but the idea that this pivots off of J-Lo's real love life with a failed marriage to a fellow Hispanic pop singer, that being Mark Anthony, and a bounce back to a, a genial white leading man beau, Ben Affleck, gives this a bit of, are you ready? Frisson. Anyway. Oh, um, my God. Frisson is probably 10 dings, but we'll just give it one. <laughs> okay, yeah. anyway, Lopez is superstar singer Kat Valdez, whose duet with pop-punk Bastion on the tune Marry Me is going to be the theme of their live-streamed Madison Square Garden wedding. Oh, I just threw up in my mouth. And then the last-minute <laughs> video comes through showing him cheating on her while she's on stage. Oh, and so my on a, goodness. On a whim, she plucks a regular guy math teacher Charlie, played by Owen Wilson, oh. out of the audience for on-the-spot nuptials and sure he agrees yeah if only this didn't do exactly what you expect it to do time and time again from the absurdity of the setup to the contrived conflicts that the everybody sees it coming climax and of course wilson's math teacher uh, has he's a single father to a super adorable really smart biracial kid who thinks he's a drip until the faux marriage to cat who it turns out is really a Jenny from the block type seeking a real relationship with a caring man. Only the natural charisma of Lopez and Wilson carry the vehicle. Oh, so it's not. They do carry it, though? Until it sinks into rom-com <laughs> convention. <laughs> La- Latin pop I spoke star- too quickly. Can you let him finish, sir? Okay, Latin I'm pop sorry, star ahead. Maluma yeah. plays the charming bad boy. Superstar Sarah Silverman is Charlie's uh, one supportive friend, a lesbian guidance counselor at the same school where he teaches and where the daughter is a student. As rom-coms go, this one should. Anyway, Marry Me, wow. directed by Kat Quaro, is better than the horrible Geely that co-starred J-Lo oh, and Affleck. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. not saying much. This is in theaters and streaming on Peacock, which reminds me that there's sniveling, pandering Jimmy Fallon as himself hosting J-Lo's character on NBC's Tonight Show. Corporate synergy at its most nauseating. Mm-hmm. Hey. Wow. It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be yeah, a better person. It sounds person. like an apology is required at the end of it. Okay, that. really quickly, I want and you... that's in theaters, you're saying? It, it, it is. Okay. And on Peacock. And it's called Marry Me. Marry Me, but okay. please don't. Anyway, I, okay. I, I want you back as a little gem of a rom-com that does get it right, even as it plays with conventions of the genre. It certainly benefits from the... Uh, effortless comic skills of its two leads, Charlie Day and Jenny Slate, as Peter and Emma, a couple of jilted lovers who conspire together to win back their exes. Uh, it's it's really pretty charming. Clint Eastwood, uh, um, his son, Scott Eastwood, and Gina Rodriguez, TV's Jane the Virgin, play the ex-partners. And um, I I enjoyed this. Uh, the setting is Atlanta with a side trip to Savannah for a wedding on a boat. Uh-oh, just like Death on the Nile, <laughs> minus the glamour and the death. Anyway, um, th- this little movie is ably directed by Jason uh, Orley, and it's the best of the four movies I reviewed. I, really? I, yeah, ah. I want you back. is genuinely funny. There was a scene with Pete Davidson that's a panic. He has a cameo in this thing, and it's also sweet and unassuming, and it's available for streaming on Amazon Prime Video. Wow. And it's called I Want You Back. I do. I All don't. Right. Oh, never mind. Marry me. I want you back. I'm so confused. His <laughs> favorite, I Want You Back. Marry me. He said, miss it. Divorce it before you even commit. Black Light, which is the Neesom thing. Not so much. Death on the Nile. Cool diversion is my sense of what you felt about that. It's but, okay. Yeah, not uh, anything to get too excited about. You love Reacher on TV. That's uh, is it is it streaming on Amazon, Amazon baby? Amazon. And uh, the Gilded Age, you. Well, uh, I enjoyed it on HBO. Like I, it's it's a weekly drop every uh, Monday. Catch so. out, ch- check out. I should say the um, uh, the mashup booty mashup at DNA Lounge this weekend because it's going to be the end of it, and then it moves to another venue, right? Yep. Uh, catch him in the Marina Times and catch him here on Fridays. He comes and goes on a rainbow. Bye, Michael. See you, Michael. So long, everyone. Mm. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>